Hi guys, welcome to the Archive. My name is Matt, and this week I've got three new lighting accessories for your games of D&D. To get started here, I grabbed a few tools that I knew I was going to need, and grabbed a few materials too. This build is really straightforward, it doesn't really use anything expensive, or that you might not have easy access to. Once I had those set aside, I started work on the candelabra. I really wanted this piece to be different from the usual brass candelabras that I see made in craft videos from things like jewellery beads. I wanted to lean away from the Georgian Beauty and the Beast look be our guest, we our guest, be our guest. and lean more into a wrought iron aesthetic, something simple but strong that could work in a palace but wouldn't look out of place in a dank dungeon either. I also knew I wanted these pieces to be stable, they're the kind of thing that could get easily knocked over, so I started with a 1 inch washer for the base. You can pick up a big bag of these at pound or dollar shops usually, and they come in useful surprisingly often as weights. Using a washer like this allowed me to avoid putting a wide flat base on the piece that made it obvious that it was a prop. I like to avoid bases where possible, I feel like this stops scatter terrain from blending nicely into a setup. It also made the finished piece stable as hell, there's simply no way you're knocking this over unless you really mean to. To make sure the metal of the washer would stick nicely to the card I was going to connect to it, I washed it thoroughly in hot soapy water to get any grease off, before sanding it down with some coarse grain sandpaper. The stuff I have linked in my equipment list should do the job. Once that was done, I cut a cocktail stick down to 1.5 inches and cut the ends off. And then cut out 4 3 8 of an inch squares of serial card, which I then cut in half to be triangles, and then cut a curve into the long side of each of those triangles. Keeping these exact isn't hugely important, as long as they're more or less the same, it should look fine. I later found it was easier to cut the curves out of these first, and then cut them out as triangles. Just makes the whole thing a lot easier to cut out. I superglued these to the bottom of the cocktail stick, because I'm impatient. You could use tacky glue for this. Superglue gives a more solid hold though. Once dry, I placed the piece in the center of the washer and added some thin super glue on each side of the card pieces, while being careful not to get any on my fingers because thin super glue can get hot when drying. While I waited for that to dry, I cut out a template that I made that's available on my Patreon to everyone for free and glued it and cut it out from some serial card. If you're looking for it after a while, just filter the Patreon feed by downloads or use the search function at the top. Now I had that, I cut out a 3 16th of an inch high strip of serial card and bent it around the template circle, lining it up with the line running through the middle and gluing it down as I went. I used thin super glue, but you can use tacky glue if you're more patient. Once I got close to sealing it, I marked where I needed to cut and snipped off the end with an X-Acto knife by placing the piece on the edge of a table so the candle holders wouldn't get in the way. If there's a little gap here and you really want to, you can fill it in with a small amount of milliput or any other putty. I didn't bother. Now that was done, I cut out a long 1 8 of an inch thick strip of cereal card and cut 4 pieces from it, half an inch long each. I superglued these to the top where I wanted the piece to hang, and trimmed down each side as needed until the candle piece would slot under them nicely. You can then loop the piece into place, and then all that's left for the main structure is to glue the candle piece to the strips. Again, I used thin super glue because I'm impatient. From here, I add some candles using the technique that I've shown in the past in the magnetic table video, which is linked above, but I'll recap quickly here. I cut cocktail sticks to the right size, drilled a small hole in the top with a pin vise, and then sharpened the end of another cocktail stick to extremes, before snipping the tip of that sharp cocktail stick off, and using some tweezers to glue it into the small hole, again with some super glue. An alternative method if you don't want to do this is to use a very thin wire as a wick, but then you don't get little candle flames, so up to you. Once that was in place, I added some Mod Podge to the candle to hide the grain on the candles, and I also added some to the main pole to hide the grain there. 
Finally, I used that Mod Podge to add some wax dribbles to the candle. I also painted the washer in Mod Podge to make sure anything I painted it with wouldn't chip later. I then sprayed the whole piece black to save some time and get a nice matte finish. Finally, I touched up any pieces the spray missed in Vallejo model colour black because this piece is tiny and that colour dries a nice matte, before painting the candles in a bone colour, in this case GW Wraithbone. I also added a final candle at the top with a little serial card circle glued underneath it. I deliberately kept the paint scheme for this simple to match the wrought iron look that I was going for. You could paint this metallic if you wanted. I also added a layer of AK Ultra Matte Matte Varnish over any of the black pieces here, just to make sure it didn't rub off later. If you think these ideas are cool and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe, like and hit the bell to make sure you see my videos in future. This next piece was even easier. I wanted something that I could hang on a wall in a more civilised environment, everything from a noble's manor to a dockside dive bar. I started with some aluminium wire, links for this stuff you can find in my equipment list, which I bent into a nice loop using some needle nose pliers. If you don't have a pair of these, they're fairly cheap to pick up at hobby or hardware stores, and they come in handy when working with wires and chain and that kind of thing. Once I had a nice loop at the bottom, I drew around a pencil and cut out a nice little circle of chipboard. I took an X-Acto knife to the edges and trimmed them down on one side to make it look curved. This doesn't need to be perfect, and is fairly optional, you could just use serial card instead. I also used some chipboard to cut a half inch by 3 16th of an inch strip, cut the corners off and cut some notches into each side for decoration. I superglued the wire to one side and a half inch cocktail stick cut at a 45 degree angle to the other, just like all my other wall accessories. Check out the first video on that in the link up there if you want to know how those work. For all of the areas where I use chipboards in these builds, I found it was a good idea not only to give them an outer coating of Mod Podge at the end to hold their layers together, but also to take advantage of their porous nature and use liquid superglue to soak into them once they were glued in place. This doesn't take much, but it firms the piece up solidly along the edges. I then made a candle exactly as I did in the last build and superglued it to the circle, and then superglued the circle to the top of the wire loop. And there we go. A nice looking candle holder that works in most rooms. I painted it as cast iron, same as the candelabra, but again you could paint this metallic or even brass. If you must. Thank you so much to those of you who are helping make it possible for me to make these videos by supporting me on Patreon. Your incredibly generous support is amazing and it really helps make this dream of running a channel possible. If you want to help support me in making more videos like this, on Patreon you get early access to these videos, as well as access to a bunch of printables to help add some easy extra details to your crafting. For the last accessory I wanted something dark, something I could hang on the wall and instantly give an evil vibe. To start this I grabbed a piece of half inch by quarter inch chipboard and cut small corners off to add some detail. I also added some super glue around the edges to seal them. I then cut a piece of wire to about an inch. The length doesn't really matter because I was going to cut this down further later. With this in hand I drilled a hole in the bottom of the chipboard at the angle I wanted the torch to rest at, which was leaning out about 30 degrees or so, and slotted the wire in to check it would fit. Once that was in place I chose where I wanted the sconce arm to be and drilled a horizontal hole into it for another piece of wire. This wire I bent into a nice loop with needle nose pliers again while still attached to the spool, mainly so if something went wrong with it I hadn't wasted a bunch of wire. Once I had the loop right I cut off about an inch and punched it through the hole, removing the other wire to slot through it and back in at the bottom again. Once I had these lined up I super glued both wires in place and cut the excess off the back, cut the torch wire down to about a quarter of an inch higher than the sconce arm holding it. Now to add those all important vicious looking bladed details I went back to serial card and used this template which again is available on my Patreon to everyone for free, link is in the description. I cut out four pieces and carefully trailed some super glue along the curved edges to seal the serial card so it wouldn't fray and so it would be a lot harder before gluing the flat edges to the top of the wire. I also added some thin super glue between each of the card blades, this just helped strengthen the hold and made sure they didn't snap off too easily. Before doing the flames I added the cocktail stick to the back just like the candle. Once I had that to hold it by I added some hot glue flames by adding a blob of super glue to the middle and then waiting for it to dry.
This allowed me to have it stable when I sculpted the flames with the nozzle of the glue gun with it still on and hot. This is something that I regret not doing for the first torches that I showed on this channel and adds a lot of detail to paint later on. Sculpting a flame is as simple as drawing a line from the bottom to the top. Do this enough times around the whole shape of the blob and it should look like a rough flame shape. I painted most of the piece as cast iron again, both because it suits thematically and because it makes these pieces a lot easier to mass produce. I'd also advise after you make sure everything's totally black and touched up everywhere, using a matte varnish on all of those black pieces to help it from getting scuffed during use. Before that, I gave the wire bits a thin coat of Mod Podge to help the paint adhere better. Metal can be a little bit of a pain in the arse for chipping after you've painted things. The flame I painted in a mix of purples. I was probably going to use this piece for a drow location first, so I went with a suitable colour. I kept the scheme relatively simple, highlighting up to GW Gene Stealer Purple from a base coat of 5050 Gene Stealer Purple and White. If you haven't done it before, when painting fire like this, you can get a good effect by highlighting up from a lighter colour to a darker one, basically the complete opposite of what you usually do. I kept it simple so I could easily repaint the flames to suit whichever faction that I was using them for. These could be red flames, green flames, blue flames, or anything in between. Same thing goes for the candles, actually. I'll be repainting these candles purple when my players visit that drow location, for example. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back next week with something really cool. Well, unless COVID interferes again. Until then, I'll be in the archive. <laughs>